Hello everybody, it's Ascent Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the most recent buff that was applied to the Chieftain Mark VI. Now, I can definitely say what they did to this tank, honestly, kind of brought a lot to it. So, beforehand, the Chieftain, it did feel a little bit sluggish. I, you know, whenever I played it, I didn't really play the Chieftain too often. This is one of those tanks that I got my hands on it, and I never really went too crazy with the chieftain um in total i probably have maybe 80 or so matches inside the chieftain mark six and that's over the five years i've had it inside my garage so i've i've had the chieftain for a very very long time and i can definitely tell you that i do not play the tank too often i'm actually taking a quick peek over here at watch stars i actually only have 79 matches inside this tank but i am a super unicum inside the tank with 3093 and a win rate of 48 percent so you know the tank for me did suffer quite a bit but coming up last 30 day statistics i have been enjoying tanks to be honest um ever since they reverted 6.0 brought in 7.0 they've buffed a couple of tanks that i really do enjoy and to see the E50 and the E50M, the way that they, they did kind of rework the guns on the E50, that 88 millimeter right now with that 280 alpha, does feel amazing. And it's really hard to deny what they did to the tank because I, they did make the tier 9 better, in my opinion, with that 40 alpha buff and the little bit of an increase to the reload. But the armor is still lacking a lot. In my opinion, the way they did the E50 is just a rework a weapon rework and that's really all it was now let's go ahead and take a look here tanks on track we're gonna be looking at the reforge so the cupola from 152 to 230 uh frontal armor above gun from 140 to 185 traverse speed of the turret from 30 to 34 i did feel that i did feel that traverse speed of that turret playing this game while well, playing um the four matches i did play inside this tank uh view range that 10 millimeter increase, 10, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 meter increase to the view range. Yes, yes, you know, we're, we're all Muppets here. It's just how it goes. Um, it did help quite a bit. You actually, if, if you want to sacrifice optics now, you can get away with sacrificing it. But not as much as you can get away with like sacrificing it on, let's say, like the Sheridan, the M48 Patton, or the Leopard 1 because they have like 410 to 420 view range. Wow, this is only 400. Um, right now, inside the actual main game, you're looking at 489 with a fully specced out setup that I have here. But you're still concealment, not exactly the greatest of 402. But what they did, they made this really nice. The side hull skirt here from 6 to 20, the premium penetration from 310 to 326. I don't really feel like they needed to boost the penetration. The from 310 to 326 because you look at the is7 is7 has got 303 and i've i've three marked the is7 and i have a lot of really good games inside that thing because it's a haul down fighter um so the chieftain with its 10 degrees of gun depression giving it that extra 16 millimeters of penetration just means that its average roll is going to be between 326 to 310 rather than you know like consistent high rolls like 6.0 cough cough but um yeah, I, I would say it probably didn't really need a penetration buff. Uh, the haul capacity, I can tell you now, um, I did experience this. I did get dropped down below 100 hit points one match, and it would have made a huge difference if I outright died. But since I didn't, we were able to bring the match back and have a win. Which, you know, for me, not too bad. So, traverse tank top speed here. Um, I'll get into that here in a sec. I actually am maxing out the speed with the 13.46 that the sink offers on its uh, power to weight. Ter terrain resistance. So we have hard from 1.2 to 0 0.8. We have medium from 1.4 to 1. And then soft from 2.1 to 1.7. Uh, this right here, off-road driving is one of my favorite perks to run. So now that I have off-road driving on this, it's just... 10 times better. I don't know why they made this so blue. It's really hard to see, so I gotta highlight it there. But no, I I definitely say what they did, they really 
did a very decent job on redoing the Chieftain with this update. It's not like the uh, E4 with what they did to that tank. That tank is just... You still can't pin it e with the Chieftain's premium rounds. You're still going to bounce with that extra 16 millimeters of pin. So yeah, the, the E4... I'm kind of just, you know, hands in the air and just blah, blah, blah. But hey, you know, um, I'm not a graphic designer or a game balance editor. Uh, by the way, everybody, they did post the super test server. If you guys do want to get into that, it should be over on their website. And along with the website over on Discord, contact Max Chaos. If you do not know where to go, I do not know where to go myself. So more than likely, I'll be asking to find out and try and get into that. Um, but it would be really cool. So the hatch, um, what they did to the hatch was they buffed up to 230 on the cupola. And when they're talking about right above the gun, right above the gun here, they did boost it to 180. So 185. Uh, yes, 185 from 140. So let's go ahead and take a look at Tang's GG here. On PC, the hatch is 60. Okay, we had 152 prior, and they still didn't feel like that was enough. Um, all of these weak point buffs, all of these hatch buffs on these tanks, I, I kind of get the idea that they want people to play these tanks, but they just took away a weak spot in front of this tank that is was there because, you know, every once in a while, people can... Let, let's say you're on Himmelsdorf and you spawn in the southern spawn and you start pushing up you get on top of your little hill okay and now you have a building piece directly in front let's say your hatch is right here thing is that building is covering your hatch and your gun is able to poke over okay there's lots of ways to be able to do that without risking your hit points that's why the weak spot with the 140 was directly on the forehead of the tank because even if you max out your gun depression Take a look at that. This is APCR. We can even load the premium in. It still goes yellow. It's still a chance. And with a heat round with 340 pin, yeah, that's going to go through. But now the 340 pin is going to be hitting like that. And it's just going to bounce. They literally made this tank, whenever you max out your gun depression now, impinnable. You're not even going to be able to go through that hatch because it has an angle to it. If we do take a look at the hatch. We're looking at 62. So... Original angle at 19 degrees. Coming down, we have an 11 degrees at 60. So more than likely, that 230, we're probably going to be looking at 270 to about uh, 260 millimeters of armor whenever they're hauled down all the way. And depending on what you're loading, it could even be an auto ricochet because there is a couple of points on the hatch near the top that are over 65 and over 85 degrees of angle. Plus, it's too thick to overmatch, so you're just going to be kind of going bong, 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 bong. But other than that, uh, Chieftain, it's not that bad of a tank, in all honesty. Like, it's really cool to see them putting some love in the tanks that have been in the game for a very long time. Um, my reload is down to 6.4. With the premium consumable, it is at 6 seconds on the dot. Uh, the terrain resistance now, I kind of don't feel like I need off-road driving but it's a useful perk just to get that extra overall uh the power to weight 13.64 it's not too bad honestly you know there's a couple of other areas that they could have worked up on this tank i am hitting that 46 top speed quite a bit though on flat land even with that lower power to weight or that mid-range power to weight i am hitting those top speeds of 46 pretty quick and often so more than likely i might be changing up my build and taking off optics for a while and running the power terrain because I do feel the power terrain inside this game is one of the best pieces of, pieces of equipment to help you relocate and get stuff down a lot faster. And knowing that the chieftain is a haul down fighter, you know you're you're going to be a, aggressive getting into those haul down positions. So why not take the extra power to weight, the extra you know tonnage to be able to get over there as quick as you can, and just sacrifice your view range a little bit because all you got to do is just play peekaboo with people inside these tanks. So it's not too bad. Other than that, I have two matches for you today. And honestly, this might be the wrong one. But we'll, we'll do this one first. That would be totally fine. I had him backwards. 
Now, the Chieftain, you know, as I said, this is one of those tanks I don't play a whole lot. I'll pull it out occasionally, but it did seem to be like one of those tanks that I kind of felt as in I was lacking just a tad bit whenever it came down to like going up against a Super Conch or going up against the E5, and I just felt like I was very limited in what I was able to do inside this tank. But now, with the most recent buff that has been applied to it, with the armor increase upon the turret and the hatch, honestly, the hatch, I don't really see a big advantage in putting the hatch the way that they did. They probably could have avoided doing that to the hatch just because once you max out your gun depression, this tank is just extremely hard to hit. And looking at the way that they readjusted the forehead armor right above the gun mantle, they have made this tank impinnable unless you're in, in let's say, like a 268 version 5 and hitting like that very specific pinpoint spot or a Yagaru. So you're going to need over 400 plus heat round pin to be able to go through this turret now unless it's on flat terrain. But the Chieftain, it's not like it's going to be game breaking. It's not like they redid the hull armor at all. They left the hull armor the exact same way that it was beforehand. And, you know, that's that's a pretty good way to do it. So really all they did was they increased the skirt side armor, which ha there has been a few moments that in a couple of matches that that armor actually did absorb a heat round or two. So having that from 6 to 20, you know, that's a pretty big increase right there for spaced armor because every single 10 millimeters of armor that heat rounds travel through it's minus five percent overall penetration and right there i do know i made a mistake against that concept 1b um but i was kind of just like eh, i'm just gonna try and you know drive across the smooth rocks uh the spot right here on the right side whenever i zoom out that little rock formation right there it's a little bit slippery and if you want to go back and rewind a tad bit you will notice i kind of slid down it and lost control so i wasn't able to get that traction um, that is one thing I would like to see them fix in this game as well. If everyone remembers, prior to 6.0, they did mention that they were going to be fixing rock resistances and readjusting them. And then they did all the HD textures on the map, and immediately after that, all of the, all of the work that they put in to fix the terrain resistance on those spots were reset. And no one noticed for the longest time. I've been complaining about it for like a year now. Speaking of which, I actually did pass my one-year anniversary for World of Tanks. I didn't realize until I looked it up the other day, and I was just like, oh, that's cool. But, you know, over this course of this year, dude, you guys, thank you for all the support you have given me. By the way, if the IS-5 player is watching, I did put sorry down because I did not mean to hit you. I was kind of looking away, doing some other stuff. And, yeah, I didn't mean to slap you in the rear like that. But it happens. <laughs> You know, we, we all have those days of Muppetry. And uh, yeah, that, that, that was one of mine. But jumping into it and, you know, going back on track to what I need to be on track with. The Chieftain, fantastic. Um, I did see that they added the Conqueror to the update list. But really, the only thing they did to the Conqueror was readjust one of the uh, stock guns. So the 32 pounder gun. Uh, reload from 7.3 to 6.8. Along with that, we had the British Tier 8 Carnivon Heavy Tank. Uh, they readjusted the reload for the 17-pound gun from 3.8 to 3.5, accuracy from 0.34 to 0.32, and turret to basically the same effects on the buff, so I don't see exactly why they had to include all this. And they also did readjust the 32-pounder gun Mark II on the uh, Carnivon as well, from a 7.7 .7 reload to a 7.3, and accuracy to the exact same as the 17-pounder to 0.32 from 0.34. Now, the Black Prince Heavy Tank, I do have this in my garage. I do enjoy playing the Black Prince. And it's pretty cool to see that they did kind of increase speed from 20 to 25. There are a couple of tanks that did that inside of the uh, British, by the way. Love artillery. Hashtag artillery. I popped a repair kit. I popped a med kit. Taking my time to get some aiming out there. They hit the Maoshin. Okay, time to back off. But you want to know what the bad chat says to me? Guess what? I don't care about your med kit or your repair kit. We're killing your gunner and ammo racking you. Because artillery. It's balanced. Right? It's balanced. Now, 
The Black Prince, they increased the reverse speed from 12 to 14, the forward speed from 20 to 25, the upper hull armor, so you have the flat plate on top and then you have your lower plate, from 152.4 to 172.4. I have not played the Black Prince yet, but I'm actually extremely excited to play the Black Prince now because of what they've done to the tank. I am super excited to check that tank out right now. And I don't know if you guys have noticed my blind shots yet or if they've even popped up at all, but I'm uh, kind of wondering if they have popped up. Uh, I'm kind of looking at the other screen right now, reading off what the update was. And honestly, they did a lot of really nice things on this update. So the Black Prince, that's one of those tier sevens that it, it you know, you, you suffered with your top speed you would push up a little bit and you would get locked down. You, you pretty much defend the base and then you, you were kind of stuck there the entire time. I did try a full mobility loadout on that tank too and you didn't have enough of you range to really handle sacrificing. And there we go, that is the second shot. I took a guess on where he was and I pulled up the scroll wheel looking around. I'm like, where's the awesome at? You know, and I remembered they removed that. I do it all the time. I always open that and I look for awesome and then I remember two seconds later after opening it, they removed it. But I did have a double blind shot on that Udez. And he was over on PlayStation, which kind of made me sad because I wanted to send him a message saying, you have no idea how lucky those shots were. And the, one, the second one that hit him was literally just a guess on his last known location. And I, I do that quite a bit. I have been doing it a lot more as well taking random blind shots to see if I hit any targets and you guys will be surprised if if you start to know where to look and one of the best like the best advice I can give you on knowing where to look is keep an eye on your meters you know if you're looking at the rock it's gonna say like 252 and then you look up a little bit and then it goes um, out of range that means you're now looking above the ridge line and you're now able to fire um, along with that, you know, if there's a lot of foliage in the way, you can kind of just scroll around to find out where the building starts, where the building ends, to give you that, just that overall better idea on what to do. It's, it just helps out. I don't, you know, that, that might be a good tip for you guys. Um, other than that, there, there's not really much to go over. Um, I started streaming for comp, and I got asked to uh, take over with... Um, WMB, which was uh, Wednesday Night Brawls. And then we have, yeah, WNB, Wednesday Night Brawls. And then now we're changing it to Friday Night Brawls. So more than likely on my channel, you guys will be seeing a lot more competitive matches popping up from comp, um, from regular weekly brawls that they're going to be doing. And the only reason why I'm going to be doing that is so then... Anyone interested in competition matchmaking or comp in general, uh, once I get everything set up and put together and you guys want to participate in that or you want to know how to participate in that, I'll post links inside my uh, descriptions of my videos. I'm going to be working on that as well to try and get those out there as much as I can and stop slacking off and just uploading a video and be like, hey, this is the thumbnail. This is the title. There's no description. I've been doing that for a year. I need to start working on descriptions. So, you know, like, primarily my channel, it's, it's not like I promote myself. People who play World of Tanks are the only people that I want to hit. And I don't care to promote myself at all. I, I, I don't promote myself. I just upload and I say, hey, you guys, you know, you, everyone that is here, whatever knowledge I have to share or whatever... I have to share and it's kind of like a vlog at times and you know I just get on go I tell you my opinions of tanks to let you know and it's like I'm not a bad player at the game you know I'm a I'm a super unicum I've got a 64% win rate right now and I just want to make sure that anyone who spends money in this game knows what they're buying or knows what to buy if you do plan on spending a little bit of money inside of world of tanks or if you're talking about like a free to play aspect, I can, I, I know ways to make a lot of silver free to play overall. And sacrificing two pieces of equipment 
well not equipment but consumables you know you're, you're gonna want to run a premium repair kit if you're not running a premium repair kit you are at such a massive disadvantage in this game that it's not even funny so what you can do is you can run a standard med kit and then another let's say like fire extinguisher or stack on another regular basic repair kit if you're able to i actually have no idea if you can or not because beforehand we used to be able to take two of them but now i'm actually gonna double check i got the game loaded up right now uh makes me wonder okay you cannot carry two repair kits you either have your choices of a premium repair kit or no repair kit that is dumb I'm gonna have to turn that in as some BS. I did not realize that was like that. Wow. Okay, I learned something new today. And it's something I didn't want to learn. Okay. Um, also, with the standard repair kits, I, I kind of feel like rather than a one-time use in it being dumb, uh, they should give it like a three-minute cooldown. Because for free-to-play players, you know, the, the premium right now and the premium repair kits, uh, the premium consumables, I, I can definitely say those are pay to win. And if you're free-to-play and you do not have premium on your account, you struggle to be competitive inside this game because every single minute, a premium player can repair their entire tank and have it performing to the absolute fullest that it's able to perform while a non-free-to-play player is going to be losing silver every single match they play using tech line tanks and using premium consumables and the only way that they, they can make silver is by sacrificing those premium consumables however wargaming has been extremely nice this past year and I, I i say this past year because they have given away a lot of tanks they've given away the defender they've given away uh the t 5042 as of recent on top of that, they've given away the Dragon. If there's any other tanks that you guys remember that they pretty much outright gave away to the community, you know, they've given a lot of premium tanks away. The M48 Rom Ponzer, which is actually, surprisingly, one of the least played tanks in the game, and it was given away for free. So, you, you guys want to boost that thing's matchmaking up for a while? Put 10 matches in it one day. Just get it out there let people see it right now the halloween events going on so we're seeing a lot more of those uh dre dread dozers inside the halloween event and it's really cool to see those popping up right now but overall it's it's just you know war, war gaming they're being really really nice and i know there are moments that i just absolutely criticize the crap out of them because of what they do but in terms of them actually caring about their community, I do feel like Wargaming on console does listen to the community. You know, we're, we're kind of a test bay for PC. Uh, right now with the uh, Strum Tiger. Strum Tiger, whenever it first came out, I was sitting there like, oh, this is going to be absolutely ridiculous. It's going to be overpowered. Um, honestly, out of that entire line, the only tanks that I see to be extremely powerful is the Tier 8 and Tier 9. But the tier 9's only got one degree of gun depression, so it's limited on that part. Now, with the tier 8, you know, it, it's a tier 8 with a big fat derp gun. And whenever you start using derp guns and you start putting them in, they gave that derp round, it, they gave it an AP round, which means that it can overmatch 50 millimeter plates. Well, it can't overmatch 50 millimeters, so it can only overmatch uh, 49 and less, but inside tier 8 there's a lot of tanks inside the game that have 49 millimeters and less of armor in a lot of places which means that ap round is overmatching top armor it's overmatching some side armor and some american tier 8 tier 7 heavies and then with tier 7s you know you got 76 millimeters on the t29 so that one's not really suffering too badly just because it still is able to side scrape and handle it a lot of russians are able to pull out and have no issues at all but then you have some mediums that only have 40 millimeters of side armor, which means that against that tank, they virtually stand no chance whenever it comes down to side scraping and just trying to take care of themselves overall.
So it, it's, it is what it is. And I know that near the end of this, I kind of went on a little bit of a rant. But yeah, you know, thank, thank you for uh, indulging me and sitting here and listening to me uh, just bicker away because that's what I do. But two matches in a row with 5,000 damage. These matches were actually back to back in the reverse order, not the order that you saw them in. I kind of swapped the replays and I didn't think about it. So I clicked the one that's supposed to be the second and this was supposed to be the first. I'm just like, mm. but yeah. Other than that, you know, I would say the Chieftain Mark VI with what they have done to this tank more than likely is going to be bringing it back into competitive. Um, beforehand, you did not see a lot of Chieftain Mark VI's just because it, they felt like they suffered. They had a fantastic gun, but that was almost the only thing they brought to the battlefield other than a really good turret. And I would say the way that the turret is on the Chieftain, you know, if the Chieftain had more mobility, it would be a way better tank. And the best example I can give you guys of that is the machine. The machine here... If they buff this thing's turret and they they bring this one up, there's going to be a lot of problems. Because you see 139 right there. That was the original forehead armor. And yeah, this was the original Chieftain turret now. So as long as they don't change that one around and they leave the mercenary tank the way that the mercenary tank's supposed to be, there, there shouldn't be much of a problem. But, you know... There's not really much to go over. And knowing that I'm past my one year mark, I'm a little bit sad that I missed out on that day. And holy crap, I have to scroll so freaking slow. Okay, Chieftain. But, yeah. Uh, Chieftain Mark VI, this buff, I, I like it. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't think they needed to buff the hatch the way they did, but that forehead, completely okay with that. The hatch, mm, we'll have to see how that goes. I'll be checking on the survivability rate of this tank after the video and checking in one month. And uh, more than likely, Scrap Metal News might start up pretty soon, just depending on what goes on. Uh, if you guys did not know, I did mention Scrap Metal News a while ago. And it's just going to be like a once a month stream where a couple of uh, community contributors or content creators get together and there will be like th four to three of us per stream just talking about like uh, over the past month we'll be going over win rates of the best tanks throughout that month, uh, what we think about what buffs have been applied to certain tanks and what could have been better or if it's perfect or not. Honestly, I'll be complaining about the E50 and E50M, not going to lie. Because that's just how I am. If Wargaming does something stupid, I'm going to tell them you guys did something stupid. I will not hesitate to do that. Because I have no problem doing it. Other than that, it was awesome having you guys here. Thank you for kicking it all the way to the end of the video. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Really, if you want to leave a comment, I will try my best to get back to you guys as quick as I can. Uh, but just know this. This is... My phone I used for like four years. And right now I'm holding the power button and the down volume, which is supposed to be a hard reset. Um, my phone decided to act up and it went on a boot loop. So now I'm stuck with this thing. This thing sucks. It was the cheapest phone on the market. Um, I'm only going to be using it for like a month, but I lost a lot of photos. I lost a lot of small things that I had that I was going to be using for my stream and getting stuff set up. I lost it all. So I'm going to be sending my S8 Active into a repair shop and hopefully I can get all that back because I had a couple of um, emblems and stuff made that I was getting ready to use for comp streams and then it died just right then and there it's like we're getting everything i have everything downloaded on my phone and then just poof. but lucky for me i have everything in one drive so i had a lot of it backed up but there was like two things that i'm missing that would be really cool to get back so till next time it was nice having you guys here and if you are interested in it uh jump over to my twitch check out the uh, uh white wolves versus ebqc on YouTube if you're interested in watching any comp matches and tomorrow if you are catching this video as it's uploaded uh Tuesday night yes Tuesday night then tomorrow at seven o'clock mountain standard time we're gonna be having another match coming up this might be the right one
Yeah, there we go. It's going to be Wednesday Night Brawls. So if you guys want to jump in, White Wolves versus Seven Crypt, it's going to be a uh, WMB match. If you guys are interested in checking that out. But till next time, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. I don't really know because, you know, I'm just sitting here talking into a microphone and staring at a camera like a complete maniac that's going to be going insane for whatever reason. So till next time, see you on the battlefield. Have a great time. I just, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're, this is how we're going to end this. Nice and awkward. Okay. It's like a first date. Except for I know I'm going home alone without a number. <laughs> so, till next time, you guys. It's been fun.